So imagine yourself for a moment to be a German soldier in the trenches of World War I. It's 1915 or maybe 1916 or even 1917 and the fighting has stagnated. You can't leave the trenches for fear of getting shot. You know, anyone sticks their head up above the parapet gets a bullet. How do you fight the enemy? How do you even watch the enemy? What can you do when your life is forfeit if you go above the level of that parapet? Well, there are options. Creative people come up with creative, interesting ideas, and one of those ideas was the periscope rifle, like this. Thanks for tuning in to another video on Forgotten Weapons, guys. I'm Ian. I'm up here at the James Julia Auction House again, and we're taking a look at some of the guns and the accessories that are coming up for sale in their October of 2015 auction. So periscope rifles like this were developed and used by pretty much every country in World War I. The French, the British, the Germans, the Austrians, the Russians, probably all of the smaller nations as well, in at least small numbers. And the idea is pretty simple. It's a way to put a rifle up over the parapet of the trench while you keep your own head safely down behind cover. We have a mirror right here and another mirror up here so that your line of sight comes down here, goes up the side, and then right down the sights, and you can actually aim and fire. Now, this is one of the simplest versions. It, it holds the rifle. Uh, we have this wire, which you'll see up close in a minute. The trigger mechanism on this sort of setup is also pretty darn simple. There is going to be a lever in here, so when you pull the trigger, you are pulling this wire, which runs from inside, comes up through the top of the wood stock, up to a little roller here in the, the middle of the periscope. And then it comes across, it's gonna go through the sling swivel. And then originally there would have been a little square metal bracket that would loop around the outside of the trigger guard. This one that's missing, so someone has simply tied the wire into a loop that hooks around the trigger. And when you pull the trigger on the rifle, you can see how that works. It's gonna tighten up and fire the actual rifle. However, with a rifle, with a setup like this, you would have to, after every shot, pull the rifle down and cycle the bolt. There were versions made that actually had articulated levers set up so that you could run the bolt while still down behind cover. Obviously a little more complex. This is sort of the mid-range version. It's fairly simple. It doesn't have a bolt actuator mechanism, but it is factory produced. Uh, it's got a maker's mark back here. And below this sort of grade, you would also have some that would have been simply cobbled together in the field. Uh, people building an articulated thing. It's pretty easy to do, two 45 degree angles, mount a couple of mirrors and a wire for the trigger and away you go. They are very, very rare today. Uh, you know, this is, when you put this thing on the rifle, you, you don't really, you don't necessarily realize it until you've actually got it all assembled. That makes for a really big, clunky, obnoxious thing. And it is not the sort of piece of hardware that would be likely to come back as a souvenir with someone. If you ran into this and you're a, a doughboy in the US military, you're probably gonna get this thing gone and throw it away and bring this nice Mauser rifle back instead. Now, in addition to this trench uh, periscope mount, there are also a couple of other really cool World War I uh, modifications on this particular rifle. The first and most obvious is the trench magazine. This is a 20 round fixed magazine. Uh, the Germans actually issued these in, in some number. They're not super duper rare. Uh, they are out there and there are also reproductions of them if you would like to get a cheap one to add to uh, any old rifle. And the idea of this was simply to give you more ammunition at your disposal before you had to reload. Um, I've seen period pictures of sentries outfitted with uh, these trench mags it's just, you know, less reloading means more shooting. In addition, we also have this, uh, a very cool adaptation here of luminous sights. Now, the half-life on the radioactive compound that was in there is long, long dead, uh, or long, long over. So these are completely dead at this point. But this would have given you two horizontal luminous lines and a big old dot on your front sight. And that gives you a way to actually aim in the dark. It's the exact same sort of thing that is fairly typically found on defensive pistols today, or uh, police pistols. Make the sights glow in the dark and it gets a lot easier to shoot at night. So as best I can tell, the official German name for a setup like this would be Spiegelkolben. Um, 
So it's easier to search for information by that name a little bit. Um, if you look for periscope, you often find simple just periscopes, which were also used in the trenches as a way to observe. Um, I, have a, a, I was able to get a shot through the sights. Unfortunately, the mirrors in this one, they're original mirrors, and they're, eh, they, they're wearing. They've got some gunk on them, so it's a little bit tricky to see the sight picture, but this actually lines up very well. Um, now, originally, there would have been one more cross bolt right here to secure the rifle in place. That's gone at this point, unfortunately. But um, So if you were to fire this, the recoil would probably jar your sight picture off. Well, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. I have seen a few of these around before, but this has been my first chance to really get my hands on one, and they're really cool. You know, it's a pretty kind of a simple thing. Some clever person, I'm sure, came up with this, and I don't know which side on the war came up with it first, or if, more likely, a bunch of people all kind of came up with the same idea simultaneously. But it's very rare to find an original one of these setups here in the United States. Uh, they're, they're rare even in Europe, where they all originally were and where they stayed. If you'd like to own this one yourself, it is for sale. Uh, this entire kit and there's uh, some other stuff. In fact, there's one other cool piece of trench modification that comes with this that wasn't installed. So if you want to see that, as well as the description and pictures and everything else that the Julia Auction House has on this rifle, take a look in the description text below. There's a link there to their catalog uh, page on this, this lot, this rifle and its accessories. So check it out. You can place a bid online if you'd like it, or come up here to Maine and enjoy the auction in person. Thanks for watching.